Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make improvements in your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon, presented by 17 Hats. Hello and welcome to your bonus episode of the month where I check in and talk about what is going on over in our book club group. So if you're unfamiliar or if you're just looking to support the show, joining the Patreon group is the best way to do that. So that is $5 a month and you get bonus episodes three weeks in a row and then a live Zoom chat where we all get together and chat about a book. So this month's book was actually not a book. It was an interesting one. It was called Goals by Zig Ziglar, and it was on Audible, which I do a lot of audiobooks. I listen because I'm always driving and delivering. So audiobooks work really well for me. And this was a collection of his motivational speeches. So Zig Ziglar is very well known in the self-help, positive talk, um, more like in the sales world, I think. He's all about goals setting and reaching those goals and achieving what you set your mind to. So a really easy listen, not only because that's type of content that I can't get enough of, but also because it was him delivering his own words in the form of a speech. It just was very easy to listen and drive at the same time. Um, Some of the other audiobooks can get a bit drier if they're if they're about some dense content. But this one was just an easy breezy listen. If you're looking for something to kind of get you motivated, I totally recommend it. Um, Zig Ziglar is dead now. He, I can't remember when. I looked it up. I think he passed away like 20 years ago. It's it's been a while, but again, he's just he's just this name in the goal setting world. So it seemed appropriate to reference him when doing a a month about goals. So you might have noticed I also did an episode about goals last week and. Um, This kind of fits into the same declutter, spring cleaning, reef set that for some reason I'm in the zone right now. This spring cleaning, this new life idea just seems to be really true in my business right now. I'm trying to get everything cleaned out, decluttered. I'm trying to look at my goals and see where I'm at and reset some of those. It just just feels like the time of year is right to do that. So instead of going through all of the takeaways in this book, because there were a lot, um, and that's what I do over on the book club episodes, I am going to talk about one thing that I think I will do for the rest of my life, because it's so simple, and you can do it today, and I, I felt like it took all the pressure off of me in terms of setting goals. So I used to feel excited. I've always been a goal setter, But sometimes it's overwhelming, like the idea of setting the wrong goal or even thinking about what you actually want to accomplish can be overwhelming, let alone, you know, sitting down and writing them down and formulating a plan. Because what happens to me sometimes is that I change my mind, like I move on from that goal. I'm no longer interested in that thing. And if I've built my entire year around that idea, That can feel like a letdown if all of a sudden I realize, meh, I'm not really interested in it right now. Um, Or there's other things that I have that are goals, and I've never known where to place them in my life, like where they fit in. So I'm just going to get right into it. Let's take a quick break. We'll hear from a sponsor, and then I'm going to share the one strategy that I think everyone can take away from this book and implement in their lives and their businesses today with like five minutes. Hey friends, the next time you need to order supplies for your professional balloon business, head over to Having a Party Wholesale. They carry all of the brands that we love and need to run our profitable balloon businesses, and they are family owned and operated and they know the business inside and out. They've even offered listeners of the podcast a 5% off coupon code when you use the code BRIGHT at checkout. So next time you need to order, head over to havingaparty.com. All right, let's get right into it. This one is going to be a brief episode. I know everyone is so 
busy right now. This is my busiest three weeks of the year. So I'm going to keep this one short. And here we go. The strategy that for me, I think is awesome, is taking time to sit down and write down all of your goals, all of them ever. So like everything from a, you know, going to Europe to learning Spanish. For me, learning to cook was one of those. Getting healthy, like giant everything goals, not the goals that are like, I want to uh, sell three grab and go garlands this week. I mean, that's like a tiny little mini goal, but this is like the big things that you want to accomplish in your life. Maybe you want to be featured on the cover of a magazine. Maybe you want to have kids. Maybe you want to get married. Maybe you want to buy your dream house. Maybe you want a Corvette. Maybe you want to go to the moon. It can be whatever. You're going to write down all of your hopes and dreams and goals. So that's the part that I think is really freeing because the way that I have set goals in the past has been in my planner and they're usually they're usually health goals or their business goals. That's kind of where my goals usually fit. Um, and there's never really a place in that list to like travel to Europe or learn Spanish or learn to cook. Like those goals are kind of outliers. They're just kind of like personal things I would like to do one day. But he says just lump them all together in this big long list. Now here's the part that I think is really, really freeing. And that is you go through the list and you're going to cross off the ones that you're just not going to focus on right now. So it doesn't mean that you're getting rid of them. Like my big one, I want to go to Europe. Right now, I have a three-year-old. I just started working in my business full-time. My husband is relatively new to his job. Like, it's not that I'm crossing Europe off of my list. I do want to go. I will go. It just can't be the priority right now. It just doesn't make sense. We already have like three vacations planned this year. I'm not going to focus all of my energy on getting to Europe right now. It's not going to get taken off my goals list. It's just going to be kind of crossed off temporarily. And then as I accomplish some different goals and the timing is right, maybe like when my daughter is in school full time or when she has summers off or when she would like to come with us and could actually enjoy it. Or maybe next year, you know, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm putting this off forever. It's just okay to admit that right now, That's just not a priority. That's not going to be one of the things that I focus on. So Zig Ziglar says you really shouldn't be focusing on more than four goals at a time. Otherwise, it just gets to be kind of too much. So maybe right now a more realistic goal for me is to learn Spanish. I've been doing Duolingo on my phone um, for like a year now almost. Maybe I'm going to stick with that. Maybe one of my goals is going to be that I'm going to do like three or four lessons a day instead of one, or that I'm going to sign up for an actual class, or maybe I'm going to look for a vacation where it's not all English speaking. Like that is maybe a goal that is more fitting in my life and my priorities right now, because it's something I can, I can actually do. Um, Another one that I threw on there, well, not on my list, on my example list that I just rattled off is the idea of like going to the moon. So he says, You shouldn't prioritize these goals that are so outside of your field that they're just not realistically going to happen. Because could I go to the moon? Probably I could figure out a way, but that's going to need to take all of my focus for like the next 10 years versus what other goals could I accomplish that would also be fulfilling and enjoyable that aren't like a totally different field of knowledge of which I have no experience. Like his example in the book was this guy who all of a sudden wanted to be like the heavyweight champion of the world, but he'd like never boxed in his life. Like he had no experience and he didn't want to deflate his dreams, but he was like, that's simply not going to happen. Like that's not, that's not realistic versus his son who did want to be like a PGA tour, like golfer, but he was already a really good golfer who had been training for years and years and had experience. So that made a bit more sense. So out of this massive goal list, you're going to cross off the ones that are so out of your field of experience that they just don't really make sense. And you're going to kind of temporarily cross out the ones that 
it's just not time for right now. Like it just doesn't make sense to prioritize that trip to Europe or buying the Corvette or for me, like buying my dream house. That's definitely on my list of goals. It's not something I'm going to do in the next five years. Like we moved to this house two years ago. Moving is really expensive. The market is super hot right now. So like it just doesn't make sense to move because we would lose a ton of money. Like that's a that's a very realistic goal. The timing of it just isn't a priority. So instead of feeling like, oh, I don't get to do that right now, for me, I find this freeing. Like, ooh, I'm just going to put like a pin in that one and not focus on it while I focus on all these other ones. So for me, the biggest takeaway from this book was this idea of this massive, massive goal list. Because I think what I've always done, I have been very aware that you should only have a, a few goals, just a handful. But I think I already limit myself when I start kind of that dreaming process. I know that I'm only going to have four or five goals that I'm going to work on. So I don't even let myself put the dream house on my list. I don't even let myself put my vacation to Europe on the list because I know it's not going to be one of my priorities. So why even write it down? But I like this new idea of writing it down anyway. Just write them all down. List a million things. You should have like three pages of things that you want to do in your life. And then eventually you're going to whittle it down to four that you're actually going to work on. So that is my biggest takeaway from this book. I thought it was really interesting, really simple. And obviously there were a lot more steps to this. Um, There was one more important part to this list building, this dream goal setting list that I want to talk about. Um, Let's take one more quick break. We'll hear from a sponsor and then I'm going to wrap all this up and do a quick review and also a reminder about a very cool giveaway. Hi, this is Jeff from Balloon Suite by Asset Lab. We help balloon decor businesses bring in more sales and leads with a high-tech toolkit that includes your website, your domain, your advertising, your search engine optimization. Our plans start at $50 a month And we'll even buy out your Wix or Squarespace or GoDaddy subscription to help you get onto a platform that's made for and optimized for your business in balloon decor. Check us out at BalloonSuite.com. All right. So I talked about the super list, right? Like you have your list of all the things you ever want to do. So Zig Ziglar says you should sit down and this list is only going to take you like an hour and you're going to get like 90% of it. But then he said you should wait like two more days. Give yourself three days total to compile this list because in those next two days, a few more things are going to pop into your head. You're going to remember like, oh, actually, that's a good thing to put on my list. Or on day three, you know, you won't be able to think of anything else and all of a sudden you'll get one last idea and He says, throw that on the list. So give yourself enough time to do this, but don't get overwhelmed. It's not going to take you three days like boot camp style where you're just sitting down working for eight hours a day. So get yourself a piece of paper, sit down for an hour on day one and write all of the goals you could ever, ever, ever want to accomplish. And then just let that piece of paper sit on your desk or on your kitchen counter. Then on day two, if you think of anything else, add it. On day three, if you think of anything else, you're going to add that. So then you have your super list. Now you're going to go through, you're going to get rid of anything that is wildly out of line with what you're capable of or what your field of knowledge is. Like, I am not going to become a doctor, right? I'm 36 years old. I have no intention of going back to medical school. I'm never going to be a doctor. So I'm going to I'm gonna cross that off my list. Gross. I hate blood. I would never be a doctor. That would never be on my list. <laughs> Then the next thing you're going to go through is look for those things that are 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 they're doable and they're things you're excited about, they're things you want to do, but now is just not the time. They are things that you are not going to prioritize. You're going to kind of temporarily just kind of cross those off. Then out of the ones remaining, you need to pick four. You're going to whittle down your list to the four that you're actually going to focus on. And I like that there was no emphasis on doing this at the beginning of the year or like at the new year. There's no timeline for how long you're going to take for each goal. You just don't want to be working on 30 different things at the same time because you're just going to forget what they are. You're not going to you're not going to remember. So instead, you're going to have four goals you're working on. And he suggests that every night, You're going to look at those goals and figure out which ones you're going to focus on the next day and come up with a plan of action. 
And that is how he says he accomplishes all of his goals. So if I think of mine, some of my goals, it's the same plan of action every single day. Um, Let's go back to learning Spanish. If all I do is every single day I'm going to spend five minutes doing my app on my phone, that could be my strategy to accomplishing my goal right now. Okay. Other times there are going to be different, different strategies. So one of mine is like getting healthy. I want to enjoy exercise and moving and, and, you know, working out. So one day my goal, my, or my, my way to accomplish or work towards my goal could be going to the gym. Another time I might not have time to go to the gym. I might miss my nine o'clock class. And instead, the only way that I'm going to be able to work towards that goal is to eat a healthier lunch or to take the stairs or to park farther away in the parking lot so that I could walk in to do my grocery shopping. Like there are like these little micro things that you can do. So instead of thinking, oh, I didn't go to the gym today. I suck. Always having that goal of health front of mind and thinking like, okay, I'm not going to go to the gym today because I don't have time. What else am I going to do to work a little bit closer to my goal? Um, Same thing with business. I think it gets really overwhelming to try to set business goals. So say that you have a sales goal. It's like $250,000 in sales. So that is actually my goal this year. And Every day, every night, if I'm sitting in bed thinking about like, what am I going to do tomorrow to work towards that goal? It could be something as simple as following up with that one client who hasn't paid their invoice. And that to me feels so simple and straightforward and something that I can absolutely do versus I'm going to bring in a $10,000 sale tomorrow. Like, I'm probably not. No, I'm not. Like, that's it could happen, but I have no real strategy to Get that. So I like this idea of what is one thing I'm going to do the following day to move me a little bit closer towards my goal. Now, the final thing that I want to throw in here that I'm not going to go into detail about, but I think is important, is to think of all the different areas of your life and you want your goals to kind of be well-rounded. So relationships, health, business, spirituality, like all of the facets of your life should have some sort of goals. Otherwise, if you're like me, your goals are going to get really business heavy just kind of naturally. They're business and then it's health because I feel like I should, you know? I'm never excited about my health goals. They're just things that I feel obligated to do. But then there are these other areas that I just totally neglect, like relationships. I am I am terrible at keeping in touch with people. I'm terrible at setting up plans. I I'm terrible at making new friends because I'm just always working and I love to work. So I think I need to prioritize some of those relationship goals which to me they don't feel like goals, right? Like I think of goals as like generating income, being able to run a marathon, like accomplishing these massive things. But he says like, no, like having friendships needs to be prioritized. He says relationships and spirituality and um, family, like all of those things need to be prioritized just as much as your business goals and your health goals. And I think that's really awesome. And I, I don't think many of us probably set friendship goals or family goals, right? Like one of my goals probably should be to visit my parents once a month, right? And and how am I going to move towards that? Maybe it's sending my mom a text and confirming a barbecue and, you know, setting that type of stuff up. So I just liked how well-rounded this was and that the idea of goals don't have to be monetary. They don't have to be stuff. They don't have to be accomplishments. They can just be investing in your friendships or making new friends or joining a networking group or trying something new. Like maybe one of your goals is trying new stuff and you're just going to try new things once a week. Like I like that for me this this book kind of opened up what I think about in terms of goals. I always think of goals in terms of my business and my health or like financial. Like I have financial set point goals and this book kind of blew that all up. So it felt really holistic. It felt really healthy and it felt really helpful. Um, I love the idea of the one big super list and then kind of streamlining it, but I like that idea of not eliminating anything from your list, just kind of putting them on hold until the timing is right or you have the means to accomplish that goal. Or there's certain times where maybe you do want to accomplish everything on there right now, but it's just too much. You just have to you have to pick a few to work on at any given point. So all in all, um, I loved this. It was, again, I'm just calling it a book for the sake of it being part of the book club, but 
really it was a it was a speech. It was an audio speech and it's on Audible. It's just called Goals in all capitals and it's by Zig Ziglar. So, um I loved it and I'm really interested to look into some of his other stuff about positive mindset and self-talk. There was a lot about that in the book too that I'm not going to touch on, but um, all very inspiring and motivational like all the books that we've read. Um, If you'd like to join the book club, again, it is $5 a month. It gets you three bonus episodes every month and then a Zoom chat where all of us that read the book get together and talk about our takeaways. And that is actually happening um, tonight as I record this. So I'm very excited to hear what other people took from the book. But the super list of goals was definitely my biggest takeaway. So the last thing that I want to mention before wrapping up is that if you have not entered the Bright Balloon Float Scholarship giveaway, you got to do that. I am giving away a free registration to Float, which is one of my favorite balloon conventions. It is taking place uh, next year, but it seems like it's just around the corner. So it's, it's March of 2024, but registration is open now. And if you've already signed up and you win, you get reimbursed. So everybody should sign up. All you have to do is put your email on the Bright Balloon email list and it is linked wherever you're listening, or you can go to thebrightballoon.com and there is a sign up for the newsletter on that homepage. So make sure to enter. I will be pulling a winner in a couple of weeks here. There's still a bit of time, um, but I'm going to announce that winner on the June 20th episode. So you have a couple weeks, but go ahead, click that link in the show notes, sign up for the giveaway so that you can have a chance to win that awesome prize. All right, that is it for today. And I will be back next week with another episode. Thanks for listening. As usual, I try to keep it bright and light. If you are interested in bonus episodes, check out our Patreon group where I release an additional episode every single week and you unlock more than 50 archived episodes as soon as you join. Check out the link in the show notes wherever you're listening.